Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be solving some problems from the 2020 round one of the British Physics Olympiad. So just before we get started, just a quick disclaimer, that these are not official solutions and please have a look at the link in the description for the official mark scheme of these questions and make sure to check out the British Physics Olympiad website which is full of helpful tips, loads of past papers and loads of mark schemes. Now with that in mind, let's have a look at question one. Okay, so the first question says, estimate from what height under free fall conditions a heavy stone would need to be dropped if it were to reach the surface of the earth at a speed of around 330 meters per second. So because the stone is dropped, the initial speed u is going to be equal to zero. Uh, we know that it's going to be experiencing a gravitational acceleration of 9.81. We know that the final speed is going to be 300 30 meters per second. So this means that we could just simply use one of the Suvat equations. So for instance, I'm going to use the fact that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Now the initial speed is zero, so I can just ignore that. So v squared will be equal to 2as. And um, now all we need to do is plug in some values and rearrange. So let's rearrange for S. S will be V squared over 2A, which is going to be 330 squared over 2 times 9.81, which is approximately 5.6, 5 5.56. 5 uh, let's round it up to two sig figs times 10 to the 3 meters, which is about 5.6 kilometers. Okay, part B, a motorcycle rider is propelled up to the left side of a symmetric ramp as shown just up here. So we have a motorcycle rider that is going up here, it reaches the apex, then they take off, and then they're in the air and there will be essentially a projectile and then we're going to be landing at point P. And in terms of those specific quantities, the initial speed, theta, the angle, and g, obtain expressions for the time ta for which the rider is airborne. Now, the rider at any point during their trajectory will be having two velocities. Initially, they're going to have a, a vertical velocity and they're also going to have a horizontal velocity. So let's say that they leave the ramp with a speed u, which is along this direction up here. So if this angle here is theta, then they're also going to have a horizontal speed, which will be u cosine theta, and a vertical speed, which will be u sine theta. Now, horizontally, the uh, rider will be essentially moving at a constant velocity, assuming there is no air resistance. So I'm just going to write this down in the horizontal direction. The speed is constant. Don't worry about writing this in the Olympiads. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to be as clear as possible and uh, writing as much detail as possible. Because the speed is constant, we could just simply use the distance is speed multiplied by time. So this means that the horizontal distance between the points O and P, so let me just write this or just draw this distance out. It will be this distance here. Should we just call it X for the horizontal distance, which is going to be equal to the horizontal speed, which is U cosine theta multiplied by the time uh, during which the rider is airborne, which they've called ta so i'm gonna say ta now what is this distance in terms of l because this angle here is 
theta using trigonometry, we can uh, clearly see that the cosine of theta is going to equal the adjacent, which is x over the um, over the hypotenuse, which is l. So therefore, x is going to um, equal cosine, let's just write it as L, cosine theta. And this will be U cosine theta multiplied by T subscript A. Notice that the two cosines are now going to cancel and what we're left with is a pretty simple expression that the time of flight ta the time during which the rider is airborne will simply be equal to l divided by u okay part two what we'll be looking for is the distance l along the descending ramp so we need to calculate this distance along here so far we've only re really looked at the uh, horizontal component of the motion so let's have a look at the vertical component of the motion so in order to do so we're going to be applying the uh, the equation which is s is given by ut the initial velocity times the time of flight multiplied by a half a t squared now there is um, a bit of a problem here really really tricky part and in this question we are given that we are leaving the ramp with a speed u this is a positive speed which means that if we are going up here and then our speed is positive so essentially uh, up will be positive and down here will be negative now because the rider as they are falling down they are going to essentially travel some negative distance along here and that negative distance because this angle here is theta will actually be minus l sine of theta and that's quite a kind of a tricky part so s here will be minus l sine theta our initial speed u well that will just be u sine theta multiplied by the time of flight plus a half and um, the acceleration is pointing downwards as well so it's just going to be minus g multiplied by t squared now let's do a couple of bits of substitution. We know that t, the time of flight, let's give it the subscript ta, is just L over u. So we can use that and we can write that minus L sine theta is equal to u sine theta multiplied by L over u plus one half. Or should we just put the minus sign here? So I'm going to say minus half g l squared divided by u squared okay we can do a couple bits of cancellation over here and what we're going to get is that minus l sine theta is equal to l sine theta that's left from from this one minus a half g l squared over u squared now let's do a little bit of rearranging. So we have a factor of minus L sine theta, and then we're going to do, take a factor of minus L sine theta. Um, if we bring this to the left, so it will be minus L sine theta minus L sine theta. And this is going to equal to minus a half G L squared over U squared. So this here is a factor of minus 2L sine theta is equal to minus a half g l squared over u squared okay we are almost there let's just take uh, let's just turn these two minus signs into pluses and let's bring this two over here and let's divide by l so what we're left with is 4 
sine theta is going to equal to g. Now, what I've done is I've cancelled this L and I've removed this. And what I'm left with is GL divided by U squared. And our final step will just be to rearrange for the length L. So what we're going to find is that the length L is going to equal to 4 sine theta U squared divided by G. Okay, part C, we have two buckets hanging from a rope over a frictionless pulley as shown below. So the bucket on the right has an M2 mass, which is greater than M1. So bucket two starts at a height h above the ground. If the buckets are released from rest, determine the speed with which bucket two hits the ground in terms of the following quantities. Okay, well, let's consider a couple of things. First of all, the first bucket will be moving upwards, and then the second bucket will be moving downwards. And this is really, really important. And let's keep some consistency in terms of the signs. So um, what I would say is that up will be positive, and uh, down Anything that's pointing downwards will be negative. This is just keeping keeping it consistent with the previous question as well. Okay, well, let's think about the forces which are acting on each bucket. So let's say on bucket one, so for bucket one, which is this one over here, it will have mg, or which is essentially just going to be m1g acting. It will also have the force of tension acting in the opposite direction. So what we can say is that T minus m1 times g. Now the net acceleration will be upwards, therefore this will just be m1 times a. Now let's focus on bucket 2. So I'm going to write bucket 2 over here. Once again, we're going to have the tension, which is going to be acting upwards. So this will be t minus the weight of bucket 2, which is m2g. But now, because this bucket, the second bucket, is going downwards, the overall acceleration will be in the downwards direction, which is the negative direction, because we've just chosen it to be the negative direction. So this will be equal to m2 multiply by minus a because this whole expression is now negative. Okay, the idea here is that as soon as I find the acceleration, I'll be able to use the Suvat equations to determine um, essentially the speed with which bucket two will hit the ground. Okay, now we have a system of two equations and one of the easiest ways to tackle this is to just rearrange for rearrange the first equation for a common component. In this case, for instance, this is t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first equation, and just rearranging it for t will give us m1a plus m1g. Okay, well, I'm going to then substitute that back into here. And rather than t, I'm going to write m1a plus m1g minus m2g is equal to minus m2a. Okay, let's get all of the a terms on one side. So this will give us m1a. And when I bring this over to the other side, it will turn to plus m2a. And uh, this will give us these terms, but they're all going to have flipped signs. So this will be m2g minus m1g. Now the acceleration then, a, uh, let's factor this out, will be m1 plus m2, which will be equal to g times 
m2 minus m1. Therefore, the acceleration is going to be equal to g times m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2. Okay, guys, so for the next part, part two, what we're looking at the um, is trying to find out the further increase in height of bucket one after bucket two hits the ground and stops. So this is really, really interesting. It's actually a super tricky question. It says the further increase in height. So let's say that uh, the bucket kind of moves up to here, a height h and then keeps on moving because it's already moving at some initial velocity it's going to travel a uh, another distance shall we just call that distance uh, let's just call that distance h1 for instance the question is what is that distance going to be well as soon as this bucket hits the ground well this bucket here will be traveling at exactly the same, at the same um, speed v upwards and that speed is the speed that we've just found out which is this expression here so um, we can just use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s yet again to figure out the uh, height at which the bucket has been traveling so now the final speed of bucket number one will be zero the initial speed will be this expression so that will be 2g and then m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 all of this in brackets multiplied by h this is our initial speed of bucket one squared and then plus two a s now because g is pointing downwards that's going to be negative so i'll be minus two g and that initial that uh, sorry that further height i'm just going to call that height h1 which is what we're looking for so i've just said that the further increase in height is given by the symbol h1 okay well let's do a little bit of rearranging and what we're going to find is that 2g h1 will be equal to 2g m2 minus m1 h over m1 plus m2 and uh, we're going to notice that those guys are going to cancel out therefore h1 will be given by g m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 multiplied by h Okay, guys, so this video was just covering the problems A to C. Stay tuned this week. I'm going to be posting up more of these problems from the uh, 2020 British Physics Olympiad Round 1. Thank you very much for watching. As always, remember to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.